Roguelike games have been my most played genre in gaming for the past few years now, and with that said, I've probably found some of my most favorite games of all time from this genre. But today I want to share with you my top 10 roguelites of all time. I've made some tier list here and there, and of course opinions change as time goes on, and today we're just going to talk about the top 10 roguelites to me. Remember this is my list so don't take it too seriously, it's just about having some fun, and let's get into it. Starting this list off is a game I've praised and always suggested. It's one I expected to be higher when making this list, but I feel 10th is appropriate and it's Brotato. My favorite of the horde survivor genre along with vampire survivors of course. I love Brotato for its simple gameplay, great variety with runs, and how short and free a run feels for a horde survivor game. Really, it's perfect! You have 45 different starting classes all with different choices for starting weapons and starting buffs. On top of that, the game has incredible community support with mods on PC, and the game can be played anywhere from mobile to console. What sets it back for me is it being a horde survivor game. While I love it, I feel it has a low ceiling of replayability for me compared to every other game on this list. I've played Brotato for about 50 hours and have cleared a run with every character. It's a game you must pick up if you're into that genre, and it's only about 5 US dollars, which does make it one of the cheapest, if not the cheapest game on this list if no sales are happening. We had the cheapest game at number 10, and now at number 9 we may have the most expensive game on the list, and it's Returnal. It was originally a PS5 exclusive and published by Sony, which made it a $70 pickup, and to this day it is still $70 on the PlayStation Store. But Steam, you can pick it up for 60 US dollars. Don't mind my maple syrup currency, games are quite expensive in Canada. But anyways, Returnal is amazing. But it can be rather short depending on how you play. The game is separated into three acts and follows a pretty standard single player structure, but has you restart every time you die. Luckily, you don't need to refight bosses. Through the three acts, you have six biomes to explore and enemies get quite strong as you play through the game. I have 100% of this game in terms of achievements and really do love all the acts, but after you clear them, the replayability does drop a bit. The combat stays engaging throughout the entire game and you still have tons of variety as each weapon can have one of 11 alt fires which are on a cooldown and get stronger as you use them more. Alongside engaging and addicting combat, I'll say the movement is flawless and while progressing the story you get great upgrades to improve upon the movement which helps keep the game feeling fresh. And while you only fight the bosses a few times total here and there, all the boss fights were awesome and a little hard as the game is a bullet hell game, so you'll be dodging a lot. My favorite part of Returnal is the free DLC that was added shortly after the game was released with the Tower of Sisyphus, which is an endless tower that has you going for the highest score possible. It added great replayability and even a small story for you to learn about, and it helped make Returnal one of my favorite roguelites ever. If you love bullet hell action and lots of shooting, this is one for you, and you can even play co-op if that's your jam. Returnal was amazing! My 8th favorite roguelite is an oldie but a goldie, and no, it's not Binding of Isaac, sorry Isaac fans, but it's a game that was released 48 weeks after Binding of Isaac, and it's FTL. I got back into this game in 2022, 10 years after it was released, and it's still incredibly fun. You go through 8 levels, and every level is a pick your own path spaceship adventure. You battle pirates, have events where you can choose to help people or ignore them, shops to buy upgrades, repair your ship, or even recruit more crewmates and sometimes you have nothing. I'll say FTL is one of the harder roguelites on this list and definitely one with the highest skill ceiling as winning a run in this game is incredibly hard but rewarding once you do it. I've played the game for 55 hours or so and have only cleared 4 runs total with 2 of them being on easy mode and 2 being on normal mode. On top of that, the game being incredibly hard, it's also quite hard to unlock more ships. There is an advanced mode that unlocks more encounters, more crewmates, and a lot more ship enhancements inside of a run that you can enable freely. But unlocking ships to use in a run is pretty hard in my opinion, but the variety is there to keep the replayability high. Every ship has three different variants to unlock that can start with different gear and crewmates, and it makes the game so fun. Every different species specializes in different areas just like every ship, and while the game is hard, I find it mesmerizing when I do play it. Inside of the run with combat is pure chaos with so much strategy to win. You're constantly pausing the game and moving people around. If you're newer into roguelites and need a great strategy game, you need to play FTO. It's like 7 US dollars. It's a steal. Up next is the newest game in terms of release dates on this list, and it's Balatro. It has the least amount of hours played for me with only 
about 35. But I can safely say this is one of my favorite roguelites, and I think it's one of the best roguelites for a lot of people. This game absolutely exploded when it released and sold over a million copies with its simple yet addicting gameplay. It's poker. Simple as that. You collect joker cards that buff you on every hand played, and they buff different card suits, numbers, hands played, or just buff you in general. The amount of variety in jokers and decks allow you to have an unlimited amount of possibility in every run. In real poker, a high card most likely won't win you a hand, but in Balatro, the correct jokers can make a high card hand your best bet to win. Not everyone enjoys poker, and that's understandable, but I don't think I've seen anyone dislike Balatro. It has an overwhelmingly positive review score with over 25,000 reviews for a reason. This game is addicting. At 6, we have the only game in early access on this list with Tiny Rogues. This game is going to have Binding of Isaac levels of items by the time it fully releases, and that's a good thing. Really, I don't know where to begin with this gem. I've made a couple videos on this game in the past with its latest updates, but holy smokes, this game has so much. 35 classes are sold total to unlock with hundreds upon hundreds of weapons and cosmetic items, countless amounts of damage over time and synergies. If you try to 100 100% this game, you'll be playing for 100 hours or more is my guess. I've played for about 50 hours total and I still have yet to unlock so much, but still have unlocked a crazy amount. The game has 10 base floors total with all floors having 10 levels to get through and multiple bosses to face. And if you want more of a challenge, you can even go to the 11th or 12th floor if you have the correct alignment with being good or evil. You can also add difficulty enhancers with cinders if you want an even harder challenge, which makes the run pretty freaking tough. But the core game is simple. You have bombs, keys, currencies, shops, and a run that takes 35 minutes or so. But if you get super into this game, there's so much to learn. The biggest negative is how much reading you need to do and how confusing some effects may be. But other than that, it's super simple and a very fun time. I'm excited to see how much more this game evolves while in early access. At number five is my go-to cozy game for roguelites and it's one my Twitch community loves and it's Dome Keeper. This game is a combination of stress and relaxation for me. Last I played it, it has two core game modes with Relic Hunt and Prestige Mode. Relic Hunt, you look for a relic while upgrading your dome to fight off waves of monsters while in between waves you dive deeper. And Prestige Mode is basically the same thing, except it's more based on getting a high score and it never ends. There are tons of different ways to play with different starting dome weapons and utilities, which all are incredibly fun to play with. I've played Dome Keeper for probably 75 hours and I'm always keeping my eye on it for updates. It's one of my go-to games to play if I'm not really feeling anything else. I love Prestige Mode so much and there's definitely definitely a meta to it, one in which in-game upgrades are the best to get from relics and what dome weapons are the best, but I just love playing it the way I want while still going for a high score. It is close to 20 US dollars when not on sale, but it's the perfect mix of cozy and crazy for me. Almost nothing beats the dome, and also the devs are trying to add multiplayer, which would be really fun to see in something like this. Number four is something a lot of people probably expected at one, and it's Darkest Dungeon. But it's Darkest Dungeon 2 and not the first one. The first one is my second favorite game of all time, but I sometimes don't view it as much of a roguelike compared to the second iteration, and I wanted to include the second because I genuinely do love it. So my fourth favorite roguelite of all time is Darkest Dungeon 2. This game is very different, yet very similar to the first one. It has a lot of the same lovable characters with similar movesets, and the combat is almost identical with more added elements. Darkest Dungeon 2 also has more meta progression, as after every run you can spend candles to unlock more character options, difficulty enhancers, items inside of a run, and a lot more. It had some added paid DLC released in December which got me back into the game and reminded me of how much I enjoyed it. The game has 5 chapters total which I have been able to clear and even beat most of them multiple times, but can understand other people's concerns with the game in terms of it being grindy and hard. This game is very hard and can be a bit tedious at times if you're not super into Darkest Dungeon, as the game only has a handful of levels to choose from, and you can expect more so the same encounters in every level with a few variant enemies. But it's something I still love. The combat, the characters, the crazy amount of strategy involved to win a run is something that never grows old to me. 
I would suggest the first game over this one if you've never played as it's easier, but Darkest Dungeon 2 is my fourth favorite roguelite. We're on to the top three and at number three is Dead Cells. This is a game I've made a very in-depth video on and I had nothing but praise for it. This game has so much DLC to make every run as crazy as possible, but even if you don't buy any DLC, the base run is still fun and challenging with tons of items to choose from. Really, the core gameplay is incredible. I'm not someone to min-max my runs, but every run I have an idea of what path I'm taking with brutality, tactics, or survival, as every single type of run has so many fun weapons and items to use. I've played the game for almost 100 hours and still haven't unlocked the true ending, beaten every boss, or have gotten close to unlocking every weapon or blueprint. Dead Cells offers unlimited potential for the player and truly deserves everything positive it has received. It does have the crazy amount of DLC like I said, which does add up on your wallet, but it's all worth it. It. The biggest negative with Dead Cells to me is the difficulty enhancers with boss stem cells, as the true ending is locked behind winning on BC5, which I personally do not want to grind for. The added difficulty with each boss cell is insane, and anyone who can beat it, <laughs> you're insane and I applaud you. I got to 4 BC and it was enough for me, but even a good casual run is always fun with Dead Cells. And coming in the number two is my second most played game by an hour compared to number one, and it's Hades. I'm waiting for Hades too, just like a lot of people, but the first is still something special. Playing as Zagreus and trying to escape the underworld and getting help from all the gods from Olympus is one of the most popular games ever made, I'd say. Well, definitely indie games. With six weapons total and each weapon having three different aspects allowing them to be played a whole new way, it adds to the endless replayability the game already has with its boons. I love Hades. The combat is fluid and feels so good once you start to master it, and when you feel like you did master it, the game has the best difficulty enhancers in any roguelite that I've played with the heat system. That heat system alone adds tons of replayability as you want to win on the highest heat possible, which of course I definitely have not done. I've won on like 20 or 24 heat, that's my best, but of course not everyone will enjoy Hades, but most people I know seem to have a great time with it. And with the amount of fun I've had in my 100 plus hours, it definitely earns the number two spot for my favorite roguelites. Before diving into number one, I want to do a quick little shout out to some games I want to play more of, whether it be for the first time or not. First, I have Neon Abyss. I played it for about two hours and ranked it on my first tier list in C tier. I do want to play this one more and see if I was a little too harsh on it with too little time played. Next, we have Curse of the Dead Gods. I got to the final boss fight a few times and died and got a little salty at it and ended up placing it in C tier. I do want to explore the game and get back to that final boss and finish what I started. I played it for almost 20 hours and was generally, it was a good time. Next is Bind of Isaac, as I've only played it for about 30 hours. I know it offers so much with variety, and I do think it has the most items in a roguelite that I've played, but I've never given it that time of day that it deserves. I beat it a handful of times, or more so I won a run, I think. I think I beat the devil once, but I know there's more to explore. And lastly, I want to pick up Nuclear Throne, as it looks incredible and fast-paced. It could also be quite similar to my favorite roguelite, or that's what I heard at least. And my favorite roguelite is Enter the Gungeon. This game is so god dang good. The sequel Exit the Gungeon is also quite addicting despite what people say about it, but Enter the Gungeon will always be my favorite roguelite. I don't think anything will come out that I enjoy as much as this. The crazy amount of weapons, the fun unlocks and secrets, the challenge in boss fights, the added game modes with blessed runs or daisuke runs, the fun NPCs, everything. I've done almost everything in this game, I've gotten all the achievements, which was a big goal of mine, have cleared the game with every character multiple times, and have cleared their past, and have beaten every boss minus the Punch-Out inspired fight with the rat. This game has it all. Going through the five chambers or more, depending on which secret chambers you want to do, will never not be fun and engaging. Every run I played felt truly unique with the characters and weapon variety the game offered. It, it may not have a crazy amount of difficulty enhancers, but the base game in itself is already challenging for a lot of people. It's the game that got me into top-down shooters, which are now one of my favorite roguelike genres, or just genres in general to play. When I see a top-down shooter, I'm more likely to play it just because of how much fun I had with Enter the Gungeon. It's the only game on this list that I have a physical copy of, and truly hope to see another game made by Dodge Roll at some point. They have the House of the Gun Dead arcade machine and Exit the Gungeon, but I want to see what else they do as I love the two games I played from them. Some of my greatest gaming experiences as of late have come from playing the roguelike genre, and I'm excited to see what games can come next that I will fall in love with. So yeah, 
that's the entire video. Thanks for watching and let me know your top 10 favorite roguelites or just some of your favorites in general in the comments. I'd love to read it. Appreciate you watching and extra special shout out to the people that support me on Patreon still. Thanks for that extra support. It really means the world to me. And yeah, I'll see you next time.